and welcome back to What That's Good Wednesday. And it is Valentine's Day week. I hope that y'all been spreading the love. And Valentine's Day, as I've said before, is not just for relationships. It's not just for the husband and the wife, the boyfriend and the girlfriend. Valentine's Day is for everyone. And so if you've already missed Valentine's Day and you, you know, had a miserable Valentine's Day for whatever reason, and I just want to say, I, I have reasons to not like Valentine's Day too, okay? Whenever I was in high school, you know the story. Mm -hmm. I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me on Valentine's Day. So I understand things go wrong on Valentine's Day. But at the same time, I do think it is special that we have an opportunity for a month to really focus on love. And love is one of the most powerful things that we have to give to people. And literally, um, that's actually a command in our life to love people as ourselves. And so I just think that. This month is awesome. I think love is awesome. I think that it is powerful, and I hope that you're loving it. So, Christian, I thought, who better to have? I was just waiting for my intro. I thought, who better to have on my podcast than my very own love, Christian Huff? Although I'm starting to regret that because before we even started this podcast, Christian has found it to be a very fun new habit of his to make the most disgusting noise he possibly can in the mic and y'all, I have headphones on, so hopefully he does not do that to any of y'all, because I've done the best I can on his, his, as his wife to tell him to stop. But Well, I, I am honored him. to be on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. And, wow, that's so sweet. And I apologize for my nasty, I, I'm really trying actually not to do them right now, I because it's such like a little nervous tick. Not not nervous, but a little tick. Are you nervous? I'm not nervous at all, actually. I'm very comfortable. I was going to say, you've been on this podcast a lot of times, and now you have your own podcast. You're a very inviting guest. Wow, thank you. I really do try. You I try cultivate to make... an, an environment that feels very welcoming. Dang, babe, you, you just like, you were so unprofessional before we started this, and then as soon as the camera started rolling, you just put Put on your professional hat. Hey, Valentine's Day is coming up. Well, no, it just passed. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, actually, Valentine's Day. Well, we're filming this before Valentine's Day. <laughs> we're so. filming this before Valentine's Day. But for all of you, it just passed. But for us, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. So you're yep. right. You should be yep. in your best behavior, I'm on my Mr. Best behavior. Huff. I'm on my best behavior. Well, we actually are going to take some time to answer some of y'all's DM questions. And y'all have sent some great questions over the past few weeks that we've kind of been collecting. We're obviously not going to get to answer all of them, but we are going to get to answer some of the great ones. Um, not that they weren't all great. But some of the really ones that we felt we had a good yes, answer to. They were all great in their own um, way. Yeah. And so we're going to talk a little bit about relationships, but we're also about faith, about life, just all the things. And so um, thanks for sending in questions. And let's get to it. Let me look through my phone right now. Um, let's see. While I'm doing this, Christian, what's your favorite love song? Ooh. Favorite love song? Yeah. Um. That's a really good question. I don't really listen to love songs. Maybe something by Sinatra mm. or Taylor Swift, maybe. Oh, you love that. I love you, Yeah, that's baby. a great song. What's a good love song by Taylor Swift? Uh, a lot of her songs are like bad love, like ex-love. Yeah, that's But they're true. like, there's, it's like. You love T-Swift. I do love some T-Swift. What's your favorite T-Swift song? Um, Man, all these, these are all like on the spot questions. Um. I, I, probably like one of the old throwback T Swift songs. No, you, I, you're not saying it. I know you have a favorite T Swift song because the other day you told me to put it on and you sang like every word. I know like every word of Taylor Swift songs. That's not like abnormal. Was Which it, one are you thinking of? Was it like Style? Style is awesome, but I was thinking like some of her old like country stuff. When you listen to Style, do you think about Harry Styles? No, I uh, actually never it? put the two and two together. Really? Nope, never. Wow. Never done that. That's shocking. Is that what you listen to? What you think of when you hear style? Well, I definitely think about. Is this about Harry Styles? <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, on to the first question. Someone said, "Do you still have moments of awkwardness even after being married and living together, or do you just laugh at things?" We actually have no awkward moments. I would say we pretty much don't have any awkward moments because we. I feel like we just know each other so well. Yeah. And we've seen each other's most embarrassing moments yeah. happen in all of life. I would say what prepares you well is if you like fart while you're dating <laughs> and engagement, then there's going to be no awkward moments when you're married. Because if you get married and you never fart in front of each other, then it's like, that's kind of weird. But if you like, <laughs> if you, you know, if you practice that throughout your relationship, then 
then you're pretty much set. Whoa, that's good. Okay, yeah, well, give people good. advice if they're like, well, how how do you do that? Like, how do you break the ice like that? Because that's awkward. And like, I'm just gonna be honest. I know this is not really the typical content you get from the Well That's Good podcast, but I know there are thousands of you out there who are in a relationship who have yet to take that next step. And how do you do that? Well, you have to really be <laughs> transparent about it. When me and Sadie were dating. And I would open up Sadie's car door. It might be TMI. <laughs> this is TMI. You should okay. stop the story okay. right I, now. I'll stop the story. But what I'm saying is you can't like, everybody does it. So I'm saying you can't like shame someone else for like letting out some gas. Oh my god! So what I would say is invite it, welcome it, and don't shame <laughs> for when somebody has a messed up stomach. It needs to let loose. Hey, this generation, if we are anything, we are not shamers. Like, yeah. we're like no shame for anything. So no shame for that, right? Yeah, no. It's, it's no. And I have yet to say the word because I just know my mom, my mother-in-law, my grandma are listening to this podcast and they are dying right now that we're talking about this. The P word? Huh? Poot. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a bad word. All right. I cannot. Let's continue. Recover. Let's continue. Oh my gosh, I can't recover. Okay. Whew. All right. This but that's is, real advice. That, like that is that, real. That really wasn't a joke. That, that was like seriously. <laughs> like if we had never farted in front of each other, then it would be so awkward. That is really there. true, babe. Thanks. Thank you for thank you for breaking the ice on this podcast You're and saying the hard things. I'm just trying to let people free. Yes, we don't want people to have yeah. that much pressure yeah. in their relationship. We don't want fart prisons. <laughs> we want to just let people. Let let the captives free. I'm literally crying. Okay. This is a more serious question. Okay. Okay. What were some things that you did intentionally while you were waiting for each other? So this could go, I guess, a lot of different ways. Um, but let's just say what are things, yeah, intentionally as we were waiting for each other, because I guess there are so many people out there who are waiting, you know, yeah. to meet that person. And how can they be intentional with the season that they're in when they're not yet dating or yet married? Because there's so much intentionality that goes behind singleness. And yeah. I think you're the perfect person to answer this question. Well, thank you. Let's pivot to this. Um, for me, it was really just prayer and um, just building a community of good guys around me. Um, you know, in that season before we started dating, I was really intentional about making time to go be alone with God and, and go pray and, and having good guys around me. We had Bible study groups, we had prayer nights, and we had just just good just guy hangs where we just, you know, get and sit by a fire and just talk about yeah fun stuff, funny stuff, but also serious godly stuff. And I, I really think that that time in my life prepared me for, True. for you know, what was going to come, but really just surrounding myself with, with good godly men. And whether you're a a girl surrounding yourself with good godly girls um, so true. and just spending time alone with God. And, and so I think that, that was for me. You were like becoming the man that you wanted to be, you know, yeah. like in a relationship, but you weren't thinking like in a relationship, you were just becoming a good man, you know, and focusing yeah. on yourself. And I think that's so important. Like you have to have a moment in your life where you're focusing on who God is in your life and who you are so that when you go into relationships, like you're a whole person. Like I love how um, someone said, yes, it, like whenever two people become one, it's not like 50-50, it's two becoming one. Mm -hmm. And so many of us, like you only have 50% to give, you know, because you were focusing on other things the whole time and you never really got to know yourself. But whenever like you know yourself and that person knows himself and they're rooted in who God is, like two people becoming one make like such a strong one, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I always thought that advice was so good. Um, Let's see, so many good questions. Um, I love this question. What is the hardest but most rewarding thing Jesus has walked you both through in marriage? Um, because I think that there are so many things that are hard but rewarding. And I was thinking about even something we've been walking through right now is one thing that's been hard for us, and I think probably a lot of people can relate to this, is just like when seasons change in your relationship and when you add something new to your plate. Um, like right now, you just started your podcast, which has been such a blessing. But hard you know mm -hmm. it's been hard in our relationship because I'm so busy you're so busy we're parents we're trying to navigate like okay well if you're working then I'm working and when do we have our time and all the things and mm -hmm. so I feel like that's been a challenge for us and that was even the same in some things in my life when I've started new things since we've been married and you felt the stress of that I've felt the stress of that and that's kind of stress has been in our relationship yeah and like one of our biggest fights fights arguments whatever Tiffs. 
tips. This was like a real argument. Yeah. Was whenever I wanted to go to college at like the worst time ever. Yeah. And I did online school and that was really stressful for you and for me because I was so busy. And I think like anytime we add something to our plate, whether we feel God calling us to it or whether we just have a desire in our heart to do it, as we pursue those desires, sometimes like that extra stress on our relationship can be hard, except for the fact that it has been so rewarding. Like each mm-hmm. new step we've taken has become like such a reward. Like you starting the podcast has just been so rewarding for your ministry, for people following, for our family even. Um, and that's something that was hard, you know, and then some other things in our life that we've wanted to start and we've started that have been busy and hard have been so rewarding and so if you're in that place where like you know you're adding new things or maybe you've just had a new kid or someone just got a new job and it's like crazy and it's busy and it's hard and maybe you know that was something that God called you to and so you know it's a God thing you know it's a good thing that doesn't mean that it's not going to come with challenges it's not going to be hard but like push into that, like get to know each other better in that, get to know each other's why and the heart behind it so you can get behind the mission and the reward is going to be plentiful. You know, that doesn't mean financially rewarding. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything like that, but just rewarding in the sense of like a soul reward. Like, man, this is a good thing. Y'all, I know dinner time can be a little stressful, especially if you have a family or even if you don't, even if you're just cooking for yourself, it can be so stressful because you get home and you're like, I don't even have groceries. I got to go to the grocery store. I don't know what to cook. I don't even know how to cook all the things. And that's why I love a good subscription box. Home Chef is an incredible subscription box where you can order your groceries literally online in box form. It all comes to you at your door. You get all the groceries that you need. You get a little recipe to cook it all. And then you actually get to cook a meal for your family and you feel like a real chef. I'm not even kidding. I cooked like some steak and potatoes and great vegetable side and Christian was like, dang, Sadie, this is good. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm a chef, you know, I'm a home chef. So it makes you feel super legit. Christian and I both really like to have a well-rounded meal. We like to have a good protein, a good side that's a little heartier, and then a good side that's like, you know, more of a vegetable. And Home Chef always has meals that are perfect for that. So we've done a good chicken option with like a different kind of cheese crusted chicken with good potatoes and vegetables. We've also done steak. We've done chicken with great sides like potatoes and broccoli that are just really good. They also have like the seasoning too in the box. And so you don't even have to worry about that. You can season your vegetables, season your sides. They have so many different options online you can pick from no matter what kind of food that you tend to like. You can go on their website, pick what you like. If you're worried this isn't gonna work for you because maybe your schedule isn't very consistent, my schedule is not consistent at all, but don't worry because each week you can pick if you want to, you know, keep the box coming or if you want to pause a week, skip a week, whatever you need to do to make sure that it's uh, the perfect time for you and your family. Also, if you need a quicker meal, if you're like, actually don't even have the time to cook a meal, they also have hot meals that can be done in 15 minutes. It's 15 minute recipes that are microwave friendly and oven ready options that will save you time and effort because you don't even have to clean your kitchen. You can just throw it all away. Plus, they also have options if you're, you know, meeting a dietary need right now. Maybe you're trying to cut some carbs out, some calories. Maybe you're needing a vegetarian option. You're trying to swap some proteins in there. You can do that as well. They have several different options from breads, breakfast, pizza, dessert, salads, sides, and all the different things. So you can say goodbye to the grocery store. This is just a much easier way to go about your dinner time. For a limited time only, you can go to homechef.com slash woe. You can actually get $90 off your first month. Y'all, that is a lot of money to save on dinner. That's 10 free meals. So again, go to homechef.com slash woe for $90 off today on Home Chef. And when you have those arguments, I mean, you live together, so you're together every day and all day for the most part. And, you know, those are things that, that are difficult to walk through at times when you have when you have an argument like that and you know that you need to press past it and get past it, but you also need to get down to the root of it and ha- ha- actually have an open conversation about it. So those are, those are things that we've been walking through as well, just 
navigating through how to bounce back after an argument. Yeah. When you're together 24-7. The good old bounce back. The good old bounce back after a tiff. <laughs> okay, I love this question too. I think I might can handle this one. You got the single one. I'll get this one. It said, what would you tell your younger self who felt like they were never going to find the right person for them? I think I would tell my younger self to just rest and just wait. Like you don't have to try to figure out who your person is. Like it's just going to happen. And I think I say that because of this, like everyone out there has a say, like, I got to find love. Like we're finding love. We're searching for love. But I think that whenever you like say something like that, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself because if you have to find something, that means you have to go searching for it. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if I have, if I lost a ring or something, like I got to go find it. And like, that's like a lot of pressure and it's like anxiety. Cause like, what if I, like I lost her? What if I never find it? What if I can, what if I never get it? All this stuff. And then you're like searching the whole house and it's like, it's actually like a huge job to try to find something. But what I've realized and even just meeting you is that like, even if I tried to find you, I don't know if I would have, you know, because I don't, I wouldn't have been looking where you were. Like, I would never have thought, like, my husband was going to be in Seaside, Florida the day that I happened to be there on vacation with my girlfriends and we were going to meet and then we were going to get in a relationship and get to know each other and fall in love and all those things. Like, I would not have in my own ability been able to find you. And I'm just so grateful that, um, you know, I... We, we did find each other. We saw each other. Um, and I just think that so many of us put this pressure on ourselves that we have to find our person. When in reality, like, I think that you just have to show up each day and, you know, have a willing spirit, have a, you know, um, present yourself in such a way that you're ready to find your person or meet your person, not find. You're ready to meet your person. You're ready to be in relationship with someone. And when you show up each day like that, you're positioning yourself in the place to be able to meet, to be able to see, have eyes to see who that person is and that person have eyes to see you and I think God just like makes that intentionally happen so I don't think it's all on us to find the person I think God you know connects us he connects your steps he knows your every day he knows you're coming and you're going and he puts you in those places um, and spaces to cross paths with the people that you need to meet whether that's your spouse whether it's your best friends whether it's your people whoever that is and I think I put so much pressure on myself not just in dating relationships but in friendships too to just try to make it happen and I can genuinely say every other person that I dated, like I was searching hard for it. You know, like I was like, oh, this could work or that could work because this or this or this, or I need to go here. I can do that. And with you, I wasn't even looking at all. Like I was just like, oh, wow. But, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I was ready. Like I was like, you know, I do want to get married. So I was presenting myself in such a way. So I hope that helps some people out there because I just think that we put so much pressure, you know, it's like, we got to get the dating app. We got to even like sign up for The Bachelor, or like throw ourselves out there, go to the club, go to the party, go to the thing. Because if we don't, then like we'll miss it. And I just don't think that you'll miss it if you're showing up every day. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's move on. All right, got a faith question for you. Cool. What have you been learning from God recently? That's a good question. Um, I kind of shared it with you, you know, last week a little bit, just about the idea of like, a lot of times when I think about God, I think about father or friend or savior or redeemer or, you know, shepherd or, or all these all these amazing qualities about God. But I had this thought last week that I, I've, obviously you know it, but it, it just really kind of hit me this past week or last week or two weeks ago. Um, but it's that idea that like God's my creator. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of like looking at like my arms and like my hands and like my skin. And I was just, just had this thought of like, not only is like when I pray or like when I am in this relationship with, 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 with God, it's not only like just my father, but it's also like the one, the being who like physically like created me. Mm -hmm. And it's just a cool thought of like, I don't know, just, just me thinking about like myself, my personality, like mm -hmm. what I like to do, what I don't like to do, like all these attributes mm -hmm. about who I am, like was created by something. Yeah. So it's just, I, don't I always know. think that's so crazy that's too. Cool like. Thought. That I remember saying this on our honeymoon. I don't know if you remember saying this, but I was like looking out at the ocean and I was like, wow, like the God that created the ocean 
prayed of me. And the craziest thing about it is like when God made the ocean, like he said it was good. Mm -hmm. And then when he made the sun, he said it was good. And then when he made the stars, he said it was good. And he used these same attributes for all these things that this is good and this is good and this is good. And we're looking up at all these things and we're like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then he made me and he said, that is good. And then when he made man and woman come together, he said, that is very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how cool is that? That like you look up at the sun and you're just like amazed at the beauty and the stars. You're just like, that's one of my favorite parts of creation is the stars. Like you're just like in awe and wonder at how just insanely creative and beautiful that is that there's like literally like fire burning in the sky somewhere light years away that looks like this beautiful little star. And then you look at the ocean and it's like, a million, a billion details that have to do with that and all these kind of creatures. And that's amazing. But like God said that man and woman together are very good. And that's just like so humbling. And, you know, we beat ourselves up all day long. We're so hard on ourselves. We, we don't think we're good enough. And then like you look around and you look at all the other things that you're just absolutely blown away by. And you're like the God that created that created me. And not only did he say, I'm good, like I'm the same amount of goodness as all those things, but I'm actually even better better mm-hmm. you know because like yeah. i can speak like i have a brain i i can sing i can worship and so i just think that's so cool so i i love that you said that to me the other day and i was like yeah. It's so true. When you look at God as like the God who created you, I think like you just become such a more confident person and Mm -hmm. and you just feel so loved because you're like, wow, like I am worthy enough that God would want to create me. Yeah. And it it pushes you to like just want to further that relationship. Like it's, it's so cool to think about we can have a relationship with the God who physically and like spiritually and everything like actually created who we are. It's pretty cool. Friends, I got something that is going to save you time and money. And don't we all like to save both of those things? It's stamps.com. If you go to stamps.com, you can actually skip out on a trip to the post office and get everything that you need to get done for your small business, whatever business you rock, whatever needs that you need to go to the post office for anyways. Live Original actually uses stamps.com and my dad's company, Duck Commander, does too. And it's been a great experience for both of us. Like I said, saved us both time So LO, you know, it's grown a lot over the years, but it started like a small business, you know, but it doesn't feel that small whenever you have stamps.com because you're able to send things to anywhere that you need and do it in a very official way. Stamps.com has been going for more than 20 years and stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. So this has, you know, a track record to it. There's a lot of good things that have happened because of stamps.com. It gives you access to the post office and UPS shipping services that you need right from your computer and you get discounts that you can't find anywhere else like get this 40% off USPS rates and 76% off UPS so whether you're an at an office sending out invoices you're a side hustle on Etsy and you're doing your shop and getting that done or you're a full-blown warehouse shipping like we are stamps.com can make your life a whole lot easier all you need is a computer and a standard printer no special supplies or any kind of equipment you're up and running in just a few minutes minutes printing official postages for any letter, any packages, and anywhere that you want to send it. Save money and time this year with stamps.com. Sign up with promo code WOE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale with no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code WOE. That's W-H-O-A. So someone asked me if God speaks to me in dreams. And I would love to share this because I've never really shared this like in a public space before. But yes, God does speak to me in dreams. And uh, I just want to say before I even tell y'all like a crazy story about God speaking to me in specific dreams, that if you're not a dreamer, like if you've never had a dream before, God's never given you that, that is not a bad thing. Like that, like that does not mean that, you know, God's withholding something from you or anything like that. Like there are incredible, super spiritual people who have never had a dream that they felt like it was from the Lord. And that is totally okay. But I will say like, it is something to pray for. Cause I remember I used to hear about this girl who had these God dreams and I wanted that so bad. And I started praying for them and they started happening. And I have to say like, it's not like I have a God dream every night. I'll probably have a God dream 
once every three years, you know, where I'm like, that felt like the Lord, you know, Um, and I'll write it down or whatever. Or maybe once a year or something of significance. Um, But I say that to say it's not like every single night I go to sleep and God just said something crazy. You know, a lot of times I have a lot of nightmares and crazy dreams and dreams that I'm like, wait, what the heck did that mean? That was nothing, you know. But I'll tell you how I know it's God dreams typically is whenever um, there will literally be a moment in the dream where like the Lord like it's like the Lord speaks. It's like this is what the Lord says or it'll be like a something in the dream will say something about oh this is a holy moment or something. And so I'll give you an example. So years ago, um my team and I really wanted to go to a conference because we had been, you know, hosting tours and conferences and stuff. And we were like, actually, that was before conferences, but we were hosting tours and in-person gatherings. And we were like, we want to go get poured into at a conference. And so we saw that in London, they were putting on the Global Leadership Conference. And I was like, oh my gosh, that would be so cool if we could go there, be a part of that and learn from all these people's wisdom. So, and we had never been to London, so we thought that would be awesome. So we signed up for this global leadership retreat in London and bought our tickets and everything. Um, And mind you, like, I was not set to speak there, nothing like that. I literally just bought a ticket and um, didn't even know the people who were putting on the event or anything. Well, I think it was actually a couple of months before we even bought those tickets. It was in November. I had this dream that... Um, in the dream, I was in a green room. So if you've ever spoken at an event or you, or even if you haven't, right before you go out for the event, there's a thing called like the green room. And the green room is where everybody just kind of hangs out. It's time to like go get a snack, pray, whatever. It's just like the kind of rest area before you go out on stage. So I was in a green room and I was looking at this map and this map was representing the world and it was representing places in the world that revival had broken out in. And so different places that revival had broken out in was colored in. Well, then Pastor Michael Todd, who I'd never met at the time, Mike Todd, walked in in my dream and he looked at the map and he said, this is a holy, uh, this is a divine holy moment. And right after that, we started singing the song, Set a Fire, you know, the set a fire down in my soul. So we start singing that song in the dream. We all get down on our knees because the presence of God seems so heavy in that dream that I woke up. So obviously this dream seems very spiritual, right? Like the divine holy moment. Um, we were singing set of fire. We were literally falling down on our face because the presence of God was so thick. And so I wrote down the dream. I wrote down that we were in this green room and Michael Todd was there and we were praying for revival around the world. It was a global thing. And we um, got down on our knees because God's presence was so thick. So how this dream, literally months later, the people from the Global Leadership Conference see my name in the sign-up list, and they were like, oh my gosh, Sadie Robertson's coming, and they had been, I guess they knew about me from YouTube, they had watched a lot of my videos, and they thought, we're going to ask you to do a Q&A. And so they reached out, they said, hey, would you be open to doing a Q&A while you're here for this conference? And I was like, yeah, that would be awesome. So they say, okay, we want to get on a call with you. Um, and this was in March, and I had that dream in, back in November. So in March, I get on this call with these pastors from London and the lady is like so sweet it's Nikki and Pippa Gumbel and um, they're like we're so excited that you said yes it's gonna be so amazing so she said I don't know if you know this but this is our global leadership conference so we will have leaders from all over the world represented all of these countries and all these places and then she said in that Monday night she said we are gonna set the place on fire because it will be you speaking and Pastor Michael Todd from Oklahoma and I was like wow and as soon as she said that I was like that sounds so familiar like it feels like I've lived this before and I said hold on I said do you mind I like write down my dreams I feel like I dream this and so I went back to November and I literally read out loud to them like I had this dream is we were playing, praying for global revival. Pastor Mike Todd was there and we were singing Set of Fire and they literally had chills. They wrote it down. It was crazy. So 
Fast forward to May, we get to um, London. Pastor Mike Todd's there, all the things. And we're in the green room and someone brings in a map and says, if this is the dream you had, we're going to pray into it. So we prayed over this um, dream that revival would happen all around the world. This is my first time meeting Mike Todd. It's so crazy, y'all. Then we go out to speak. I do my thing. Pastor Mike does his thing. The event ends. And then uh, Pastor uh, Nikki says, hey, Sadie, can you come back on stage? And will you just pray for just a presence of the Holy Spirit to fill your, to anoint your um, generation like never before. So I go up there and I start praying and it is like, I'm talking like the presence of God is so thick in the room. It was crazy. It was such a holy moment. Then Mike Todd grabs the mic and he starts singing, set a fire down in my soul. And literally this whole entire, it's the Royal Albert Hall. It's like 8,000 leaders from all over the world are singing set a fire. And I am on my face, literally just like the dream was. And so it was just one of the most crazy experiences of my life. And I've had a couple other moments where a Christian scene in my life where I've had a dream and then something like that has happened. That's probably the most significant one. But I say that to say that, yes, I do believe God still speaks in dreams. God has done it for me, and I don't think you can deny that. Like, how can you deny that that happened? I never had met Mike Todd before. How in the world would I have known I was going to speak at a global leadership conference? That was before I even bought a ticket to go to that thing. Like, That was just insane. But like when you look at the God of the Bible, who's the same God today, God spoke in dreams all the time. And so why wouldn't he speak to us in dreams? And so I always ask, like, I've kind of been out of the habit now and I need to get back into it. But every single night I would say, God, speak to me in my dreams. There's a verse in Isaiah and it talks about how like in the morning my soul longs for you, in the evening my spirit earns for you, God. And it's basically just this prayer of like 24-7, I'm longing to see you. And so sometimes before I get to sleep, I just say, God, like my spirit longs to see you tonight, like speak to me. And sometimes I'll have a word and I'll wake up in the night and I'll write it in the notes of my phone. And then years later, I'll look back and it came true. Like one time I had a dream that it said the baby will be born January 10th through January 12th. And then my sister, Rebecca, two years later had Zane uh, January 11th. And I had written that down. So that was kind of a cool one to go back on. So if you ever just feel like something in your dream was significant or spiritual or anything like that, I just encourage you have a prayer journal beside your bed or your notes on your phone and write it down. Because if you just write it down, you never know how in years later it might come into fruition. And when it does, people get to see God in the coolest way. Like that always just blows people away that God still does that. And so let's like tell more about the things that God does in our life, because I think it would just increase the faith of people. Yeah. I don't have anything really to say after that. That was so good. But it's cool, huh? That's awesome. It's incredible. So cool. Have you ever had a God dream you feel like? Nothing like that. I mean, I feel like I've, I've had moments where like things in my life were significant that I feel like kind of correlated, but nothing like that I saw, like, that I had this vision or this dream and something came into fruition like that. Are you a dreamer, though? Like, do you feel like you have a lot of dreams? I do. I have some weird dreams. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'm, like, fighting aliens and <laughs> getting into fist fights. It's I have some really whack, whack out dreams. So many of you know my fitness goals this year. Yes, I want to do one pull up, but also I just want to be strong and healthy and strong enough to where my daughter, as she continues to grow, she's like 20 pounds now, I can keep picking her car seat up and putting it in the car because y'all, that is getting hard. I'm starting to get my mom muscles, but I need a little bit more than mom muscles to get that car seat in in an effortless way. And so I'm trying to get my body healthy. And one way I'm doing that is through Athletic Greens. If you don't know about Athletic Greens, AG1 is a part of Athletic Greens that makes nutrition a lot easier. You know, you might have been trying to keep up with your nutrition and you have all these vitamins and all these things that you have to take. Well, AG1 is just one scoop of powder that has everything that you really need for your nutritional value in a day. Let me just tell you all the things that AG1 by Athletic Greens has in it. 
One tasty scoop of AG1 by Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. That's including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blends, and all of that in just one convenient daily scoop. So I'm really thankful for something like this. Uh, Christian loves this as well. We both have used it. And then also it's lifestyle friendly to whoever you are. So if you're keto, if you're paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, um, this works for you. It also contains less than one gram of sugar. It has no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, which is why it still tastes great. And so this is a great option for any of you out there who are on a fitness journey, trying to be healthier. This is a simple, simple step you can do to up your game in a really fast way. Athletic Greens also wants to make it easy on you. And so they're going to give you an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, just simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health today and give AG1 a try. These are the things with dreams. Like, I have those dreams too, you know? Like, I have just weird dreams that you're like, what even was that, you know? And so, like, yeah, not every dream is a spiritual dream. And Mm -hmm. also, like, I want to say this too because I think some dreams come out of fear, you know? I think that, like, if you're afraid something might happen, like, you might have a dream that that happens, and that doesn't mean that that's God saying this is going to happen. That's not, like, a prophetic dream, you know? Because, like, my fear would be that something would happen to you, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I have dreams that something happens to you sometimes. And, like, I have to, like, not panic and think, like, oh, that's God telling me this. Because I don't think that God speaks in fear. Like, whenever God would speak in dreams, like, yes, there would be scary things that he would say in the Bible, but he would, like, give people a way out or kind of, like, prepare Mm -hmm. their hearts or something. But I think, yeah, like, it would be, like, peace. It would be, like, a peaceful thing at the end. But I think that sometimes, like, we have dreams because we've been thinking about something a lot. We've been afraid of something. And so just, like, have the wisdom to discern concern whenever something is a dream out of your own fear out of your own thought pattern that might be mm-hmm. negative out of your own the thing that you saw that day maybe you stayed up too late and you ate pizza before you went to bed or you drank something really sugary like those things affect your dreams too i'm not some scientist so i don't know all the things but i have watched a lot of videos on dreams it's okay. but i am just saying like not everything is a god dream yeah okay let's see and let's do like one more um okay this is a great question If I want to break a bad habit, where do I start and how do I do that practically? So let's maybe go two ways with this. Like, okay, what's a bad habit you've ever had to break? Like, that wasn't, like, a sin. Hmm. I feel like you bite your nails, but have you ever stopped that? Biting my nails? No, I do that all the time. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I feel like I, like, all my, like, little ticks. I feel like I, like, scratch, like, my psoriasis and... I have psoriasis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I bite my fingernails. Um, but you haven't stopped those things? No, I haven't stopped those You know things. what I would say like, was a bad habit for me? And I don't know if people consider this a habit, but I used to be like so sensitive, like literally about everything. Maybe my maybe my other bad habit is I say literally all the time. Mm-hmm. But like I was so sensitive. I remember like my mom used to call me um, – sensitive sally or sensitive sue and it would drive me crazy Mm -hmm. because i was like i don't want to be sensitive like i don't want to cry after everyone you know looks at me wrong or whatever and like seriously back in the day if you like looked at me wrong i would be like well they don't like me whatever it was just so sensitive when i was younger and i feel like i really did grow out of that by just being like okay i am not going to be this person like yeah i do not want to be sensitive like grow some thick skin Mm -hmm. and thank god i did because if I was still sensitive, that sensitive right now, and I had all these people's opinion on my life, it would crush me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So thank God yeah. I broke that habit. And I, that is kind of a good piece of advice, though. Like, if people say something about who you are, and maybe that actually is a part of who you are, like, you actually are really sensitive like I was, or you actually, like, are a really anxious person, you actually are maybe even annoying, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever people say about you, you actually can fix that. Like, you can control you and you are the only person that can control you you're the only person that can choose to change who you are at the end of the day so if there's something about you that bothers you fix it don't stay in it like become a better person ask god to help you like make you the person that you can be and let the holy spirit do a work in you and so you do not have to say the person that people make fun of yeah 
I kind of had this thought, um, and it, it, it might sound kind of rude, but I feel like I used to maybe think that, like, people were just, like, dumb. <laughs> but I was, no, like, I'm saying, like, whether it's, like, somebody who doesn't, like, do something the way that I, that I, the way that I would do it or, That's like. the most Enneagram one thing you've ever no, said. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, you know, show some vulnerability here. Um, whether it's, like, people driving too slow or, you know, somebody, uh, like, a waiter or something, like, being confused or taking too long. Yeah. Like, I would just be quick to, like, just think or say, like, this person is not so smart. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I, and, I, and I've gotten out of that. I've, I've been a lot more gracious to people. So that's a bad habit that I had for a while that I... That is good. That, I got, that I've gotten out of. I'm glad that you see that. I have. Thank that you. is good. Okay, now let's go a little bit deeper. So say someone's, like, actually in a sinful habit. And, like, yeah. this is a sinful habit that they have continuously walked in, you know, each day, every week, whatever it is. How mm-hmm. do you get out of that habit? And I think yeah. you have good advice for this because you and your friend group walked through something like this before. Yeah. Well, I think at some point you have to really lean into like your conviction. If you, And if you don't have conviction for things that you're doing that are sinful, then I would say that's a red flag. And I would, I wouldn't question I mean, I just would, you know, be like, am I actually truly a believer in, in what this book tells us about? Like, if I... Am I really you know, walking like, with Jesus? Yeah, well, because... If, if well, the Holy Spirit's in your life, like, you mm-hmm. should feel convicted. Well, Scripture says if you go on sinning deliberately, then the sacrifice of Jesus has no place in your life. So there, there is a point where, like, you, we still struggle with things. We still mess up. We still, you know, battle things. First John 1 says that if he, he write these things to us so that we don't sin, but if we do sin... So John's writing us to and like saying that like I know that you're gonna still mess up, but there's there's a difference between like habitually sinning and struggling with sin and having repentance for that. So first off, what I would does that verse say, end with? Then you said, if you do sin, though, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Yeah, I wanted you to finish that because yeah. there is there is that huge aspect that yeah. if you do sin, we do have one that speaks to the Father, Jesus Christ, who did take away our sin with his yeah. blood. But at the same time, if you deliberately continue to disobey God and quench the spirit, you know, in your life and just continue to sin, then there's also that of like, is Jesus Christ really on the throne of your life? Like, yeah. have you really accepted mm-hmm. Jesus Christ as Lord and mm-hmm. Savior and are you walking with yeah. him? Well, I think that's what the spirit, like it says that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. And I think that's that the gift is to help us walk on that path, but that also has conviction for our mm-hmm. things. Like yeah. there's your old self and then there's your, there's the new self who you are in Christ. Um, second Corinthians tells us that, but there's a, so let's talk about the obvious one here, because I think one of the most obvious things that young people in our generation, our age are struggling with on a daily basis is pornography. Mm-hmm. And that is a, that is a hard one to break. That is a habit that is hard to break. That is something I know that your friend group had an incredible moment with. Mm -hmm. And I want you to kind of speak towards that because I feel like there was a time where y'all were all like on fire for the Lord, but y'all were Mm -hmm. still walking in some of those things. And then finally you were like... Mm -hmm. I was about to get there. Okay, good. That was where I was going with that. Um, But thank you. Um, Yeah, I know. So when I was in college, we had a a men's Bible study group. Men's, guys, whatever. We had a, a guy's Bible study group. And week after week, it just kind of felt like whenever we would ask for prayer or, you know, how, how everybody's week was or kind of what, what people were struggling with or still, you know, kind of battling with it, it always kept going back to, like, pornography and lust. And finally, I remember it was this, like, weekly thing of, like, the same thing, the monthly thing over and over again. And then finally, we were kind of like, what are we going to actually do about this? Because I feel like every week we're just saying, I'm struggling with lust, I'm struggling with pornography. And it was like, we took this change of, like, let's just stop saying we're struggling with it and let's actually do something about it. And I feel like at that point we really held people accountable and we really saw us slowly start to deteriorate from, from, from these things that we had struggled with. And it just became a point where like, cause you, because if you struggle with something and you keep struggling, you keep struggling with it, you can get comfortable in that. Yep. But the moment where you're like, I don't want to keep deliberately doing this. I need to make a change. Yeah. I finally have conviction for this and I need to repent of that and I need to change. Because repentance is like, yes, you ask for forgiveness, but there's also a change to it. So like totally. 
there has to be a different direction of where I'm going. Totally. So that was for us. It was like, it was just this continual, like, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. And then finally we were like, okay, let's just stop saying we're struggling and let's actually do something about it. Yeah, I love that. And I was so inspired by that. And I just want to say for people out there, like, there's a couple things you can take from that. One, they did it with a group. Like, there was a group of guys to hold each other accountable who were like, we're done with this, right? Two, they actually did things to help them stop. Like, I remember y'all took some, like, serious, like, practices into play, you know? And, like, actually held each other accountable. So it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, like, I'll text you, like, next week and see if you're doing good. Like, Mm -hmm. y'all, like, for real were up in each other's grill about it. Mm -hmm. And y'all, like, did so many things, like, together as a group. And that didn't mean some of y'all didn't still continue to struggle off and on. But, like, y'all were with each other. Mm -hmm. And I've just, you know, I didn't know you during that time or the guys in your group. But now, obviously, we're married. And all those other guys in your group are married, too. And, like, praise God, there was Mm -hmm. a moment a year, years before y'all were all married that y'all took this time as guy friends to kind of get that under control. Yeah. And I just think that's so good. And so if you're walking through something like that right now where it is a sinful habit and it is continuously eating you up, um, and maybe you know someone else walking through that too, I encourage you get with that person and decide today, like, it will no longer be a struggle. Like, mm-hmm. yes, it is going to try to fight, but we're going to fight back. And that doesn't mean you won't maybe continue to mess up every now and then. But that is saying that I'm not going to let this own my life, you know, Mm -hmm. and actually put into practice the things that you have to put into play to make sure that it goes away. Because when you are fighting a giant like that, you got to you got to have your weapons, you Mm -hmm. know, you got to you got to know how to fight back, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think that's really important. So good advice, man. We covered all our grounds today. As the new Elevation song says, I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Ooh, sheesh. That'll preach. Thank you. All right. I think we close it right there. Thanks for tuning into the Whoa, That's Good Wednesday podcast. That was way too loud. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's week. Thanks for tuning into the Whoa, That's Good podcast. Go Christian spread the really love. really crushed it for me. Yeah. Go spread the love. Go be loved. Go be loved. Go show love. You are love. You are love. And you are love. loved. Okay. We got to end this. <laughs>